If you want to learn how to code now, you've come to the right place. When I was first starting out, I watched a ton of YouTube videos on how to start coding. And even though a lot of them had a lot of valuable content and provided me with a complete picture of what to expect, I often found myself overloaded with information on matters like what languages to use, or if I should become a backend or a front-end developer, or what frameworks do I need to learn, and so on and so on. That left me feeling confused, overwhelmed, and really lacking the motivation to start because there was just so much to do. I realized, however, that what I really needed was a simple and easy to follow actionable plan. That actionable plan needed to seem attainable and just the right amount of challenging so that it was something that I felt that I could overcome. So in this video, I want to completely step away from that approach and guide you on how to start now and get that ball running. And believe me, once you've gained some momentum and have been coding for a while, all these decisions you thought you had to make before you start will suddenly seem much easier to make. That being said, let's dive in. I have created a four-step system on how to get you started in coding, and I've given it a fun cheeky acronym so that it's easier to remember. I like to call this system the LABS system, which stands for Language, Alphabets, Build, and Solve. A lot of emphasis is placed upon this point and it's probably so for good reasons. If you're just starting out, you probably don't want to start investing your time in learning a language that isn't popular and widely used, especially if you want to start a career as a software engineer. However, this decision is much easier to make than you might think and I will guide you through it. A Google search of the top 10 most popular programming languages to learn in 2021 will probably steer you in the right direction. Any of these choices would be considered a good choice. Well, not any. <laughs> Who wants to learn Java? Just kidding, just kidding. Java developers, please don't come for me. However, I do not want to confuse you. I personally think if you're just starting out, you probably want to start with either Python or JavaScript for many reasons. But before I dive into why I recommend these two languages, I want to preface this by saying that this advice is generally geared for the common backend or frontend developer. Meaning that this is sort of generalized advice. So if you're looking into going into a specific niche, like game development, for example, you're probably going to want to learn C++. Or if you're going to want to become an iOS developer, and make iOS apps, then you probably want to look into Swift and so on, which is why I still recommend doing your own research. Now, that being said, I personally recommend Python and JavaScript for two main reasons. Reason number one, they're both very popular and you will probably find them both on the top five of any of those top programming language lists. In addition, if we look at the Stack Overflow survey for 2020, you will see that both of these languages are in the top 20, 25 languages. If you don't already know what Stack Overflow is, then you're missing out big time because Stack Overflow is literally life. It's a platform where you can ask coding specific questions and receive answers from the community and you will probably be on it every day for the rest of your programming life. That thought haunts me sometimes. So you might ask, why does it even matter if a language is one of the top Stack Overflow languages? And that's a great question. Being a top language on the Stack Overflow list means there's a very big community of people that use that language, which means more community support. And that means that chances are almost all the questions that you might be running into as a beginner have not only been already asked there, but probably also already answered. This resource will most definitely become your best friend. And the bigger the community of people that use a language, the more jobs that will be available for that specific language. Reason number two, both of these languages are widely used by so many of the big tech companies like Google, Facebook, Netflix, Pinterest, YouTube, Apple, and Century where I work. And so more job opportunities. Now we probably can't get away with talking about programming languages without the discussion of backend versus frontend development coming up. So without getting into too much details, frontend development involves writing code that is facing the user and that requests data from the backend. So for example, when you open up Instagram, everything you see and interact with is developed by front-end engineers. But when you look at the images and the number of likes and the followers, this is where the back-end comes in. So what happens is the front-end talks to the back-end. The front-end says, hey back-end, I want all of the images for this specific user, the likes of his images and his followers. Shameless plug here, I know. <laughs> Go follow. And then the back-end replies, sure front-end, but I'm going to need to see some ID. Sure, backend, here you go. And then the backend goes to the database and gets these data and gives them back to the front end, which then the front end shows it to you, its user. This is obviously a massive oversimplification of the process that actually takes place, but it helps us understand, so I don't really care. Python is a backend technology and JavaScript can be used for both backend and front end development. However, when you're just starting out with learning the fundamentals of a language, it doesn't make much sense to focus on this backend versus front end discussion because you need to learn how to use the language before you're able 
able to use that language for either back-end or front-end development. This is a decision for the future you to worry about. Before I move on to the next step, and I just want to emphasize that what I'm about to say is a personal recommendation and is very highly biased. I personally think you should actually start with Python and my recommendation is solely based on how easy it is to learn Python because Python is literally the closest anything can come to English. The other thing is that how useful it is in terms of potential applications. Great, see how easy this was? Let's go to step number two. When you want to learn a new language, before you're able to construct sentences, you probably need to learn the alphabets first, which then you can later use on to construct words and then sentences. So in this step, we need to do the equivalent of that when it comes to coding. This basically involves learning the fundamentals or the building blocks of a programming language. So learning things like conditionals, arrays, for loops, hash maps, and so on and so on. Once you have somewhat of a good knowledge of these building blocks or fundamentals, you'll be able to use them to create more complex snippets of code that are able to solve some kind of logical problems. So then how do we start with learning these fundamental blocks? I will provide some references for coding courses to go through that probably can help you acquire a good knowledge of those building blocks. I will leave links to both paid and free resources in the description so make sure not to miss them. However, I can only provide references for Python and JavaScript because these are the only languages that I'm most comfortable with. I won't go into much details about these courses but I just wanted to highlight courses that have personally impacted me in a positive way and I think they're absolutely great. For Python, one of the paid resources that I'll be adding is the trilogy of courses by Robert Smallshare and Austin Bingham. And they are for beginner, intermediate, and advanced levels. And I think they're absolutely fantastic. I was only able to find these courses on a platform called Pluralsight, which is sort of a subscription-based platform, but they offer a 10-day trial version so you can check out the course content before committing to it. And for JavaScript, I have done a course by Westbos, and it was really great because it was super fun to do and very engaging. Disclaimer though, by no means am I saying that these are the best courses out there or that they're better than the other ones, even the free ones. These are just the courses that I have personally went through. But also don't worry because I've personally made sure to vet the other resources and I think any of them would be a great choice. Now, once you've picked a course, it is time to double down on that course and get your hands dirty. I know you're probably very excited to start, but before I leave you to it, I have a few tips you probably wanna keep in mind when you're going through these courses. Tip number one, you need to actively code the examples in the course along with the instructor. Just passively going through the course content will get you absolutely nowhere. You're probably going to need to pause the video many times as you go to write the code and make sure you understand what you're actually coding out. A good rule of thumb is that if you're following this approach and doing the code examples along with the instructor, it should probably take you twice as long to finish the video course. Tip number two, you need to actively engage with the content you are consuming. What I mean by that is that you need to give your undivided attention to the course. If you're going through the course and just copy pasting the code snippets mindlessly, you also won't retain much and it won't take you anywhere. You need to make sure you understand what you're consuming and if there's something you do not clearly understand, then you probably need to look it up before moving on to the next section. Doing so will hammer down these information in your brain and will make you pick up the skills required exponentially fast. This is probably the most fun and the most crucial step for your learning. In this step, your goal should be to transition from a tutorial-based learning approach to more of a project-based learning approach. This means that you will learn and level up your skills through doing actual projects and solving actual problems. This approach has been proven to be a very effective method of learning, especially in tech, for a few reasons. Reason number one, you are in the driver's seat of this learning process, which means you'll be fully engaged in the learning experience, since you're going to literally be the one asking for a specific piece of information rather than receiving it buried amongst a bunch of other things. And so the chances of you retaining that piece of information are much, much higher. Reason number two, it is much more motivating to build projects and learn as you go. Once you translate those code skills that you have gained into a project you could use, like a to-do list web app, for example, I guarantee you, you will be super motivated to continue coding and building more projects. Reason number three, taking over a project end to end will teach you a bunch of other skills quite seamlessly. So for example, when you go on to build Let's say a grocery list web application. You'll first start by building some simple backend using Python or JavaScript. Once you get that functionality up and running, you might find yourself wanting to give it a nicer look and that will make you end up learning some HTML and CSS along the way. So how do we do this project-based learning approach? I'm glad you asked. By this point, you probably have already gathered enough language information and knowledge to allow you to start building real projects. And so I won't ramble too much here. And I would just wanna leave you with some references or project ideas to work on. 
For this step, you might need to familiarize yourself with what is called frameworks to be able to build fancy websites. A framework in its simplest explanation possible is a structured collection of code written to make your life easier. So for example, a Python framework might contain some code that takes care of things like I don't know, handling the connection to a database or handling the security so you don't have to rewrite that code every single time you build a website. Frameworks are basically your best friends because they make your life simpler. In Python, I recommend diving right away into building websites with either Django or Flask frameworks. Both of these are widely used with Django being used in companies like Spotify, YouTube, Instagram, and Flask being used in like Netflix, Airbnb, and Reddit. In JavaScript, for backend, I recommend using Express with Node.js and for frontend, I recommend using using React. I will leave fun project ideas and project-based tutorials in the description for all the frameworks I mentioned. So make sure to check them out and absolutely feel free to come up with your own project ideas. The whole point of this step is to build really cool stuff. Regardless of what your goal is, whether it is to get a software engineering role or you're just learning coding as a hobby, I think there's a lot of value to solving competitive coding questions. In case you don't know what I'm talking about, I'm talking about improving your coding skills through solving coding questions on platforms like Lead Code, Hacker Rank, Code Wars, and so on. Solving these questions will help you get good at logically solving problems that you might encounter in real life situations. And it will help you gain knowledge in areas like data structures and algorithms. That will get you to a decent level of fluency in the language you're practicing. In. These questions usually give you a prompt for a problem and then they expect you to solve that problem with whichever language you're most comfortable in. When it comes to the resource I like to use, I've already made a video about my favorite platform to solve these kinds of questions, so I won't go into much details about that, but make sure to check out my other video that I talk about Algo Expert in. The goal of this step is to solve, solve, and solve. Putting in the hours basically is all about it. By this point, this has hopefully become part of your routine and you're much more comfortable at it compared to when you started. I would say about now is the time you start doing your research on where you wanna take this and what you wanna do and how you wanna specialize in it. And hopefully these decisions that overwhelmed you and me in the beginning won't overwhelm you anymore. This is a bonus tip, but I couldn't end this super duper practical video without touching on this tip. To get good at anything in life, you need to be a part of a community for a couple of main reasons. Reason number one, you will hold each other accountable and so you will be more likely to stick it out. These people that will become your community will also give you the extra push you need when you're feeling unmotivated to code. And reason number two is that you will bounce knowledge off of one another. You will level them up in areas where you're stronger in and they will level you up in areas that they are stronger in. This idea of a community could be anything from one or two friends that want to start this journey alongside you to a fully fledged group of people that you might have specifically joined for accountability and growth purposes. It doesn't really matter which way you decide to go for, but it could be really useful to have people alongside you in this journey. If you've enjoyed watching this video and you're thinking about becoming a software engineer, then I highly recommend you to check out my other video on how I got my dream job, where I talk about the process that I followed from preparing for the interviews to applying to actually landing job offers. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.